Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update pup date time, week 36. If you're new to this channel, I do this style video every single Sunday on my Bull Mastiff Tua. And I basically do these videos not only for myself to look back on one day, but to create a great log of information for potential future Bull Mastiff owners. I basically track his progress from everything from physical growth, you know, what, what he weighs. I update you guys on that weekly. What his height is, I've been updating you guys on that monthly. And then just, uh, not just physical traits, but uh, mental traits, how, how he's doing with training, how he's doing with barking, what I'm feeding him, socialization, drooling, uh, his energy levels, all kinds of stuff. And basically, it's kind of just gonna be a great log. If he turns out to be a great dog, um, you'll be able to see what I did to kind of create that. And it's just going to give you a really general idea of what the breed is like because you'll be able to see him from uh, his, his growth all the way from when he was a puppy, you know, all the way through his life. So go ahead, check out all the videos if you're interested in the breed. Usually I start these videos out with anything that was kind of new from the week, new experiences or things that I noticed. And it was actually kind of a boring week this week. Um, we were really busy with work, so we didn't get a whole lot done as far as Tua went. One thing that I did bring up a couple weeks ago that was was a uh, new behavior was he started marking and I will say that he's still doing that uh, quite a bit. He's marking trees and bushes even in our yard now before it was just kind of out on walks or in, and stuff like that or if he was exploring where I can only assume that he was smelling other dogs but now he's doing it even in our backyard on stuff uh, bushes and whatnot where obviously it's only his scent so he hasn't done it inside yet. I have heard that it can be an issue with unfixed dogs marking uh, outside and inside. Hopefully that doesn't become an issue, but uh, I'll be here to let you know if it does. His energy has been uh, kind of up and down also. I, I was saying before that he was in this teenager phase, you know, kind of the last month. He's definitely still in it, but I feel like it, it kind of peaked maybe a couple weeks ago and he's starting to slow down overall, but uh, we'll see. That could just be a fluke. Now we'll go ahead and get into weight. He was 103 and a half pounds last week. And I kind of mentioned that I, am, I anticipated that that growth would continue to slow down because he was gaining probably two pounds a week for, uh, I want to say four or five, six straight weeks. And then last week he only gained half a pound. And I thought that, you know, that would definitely slow down and kind of continue, maybe not even gain weight uh, certain weeks except for random growth spurts. And I can say that uh, he had one of those random growth spurts because he put on three and a half pounds this last week, which was the most that he's put on. And I'd say almost two months. So he went from 103 and a half to 107 pounds. And I guess I didn't even really notice it. He kind of put that weight on pretty clean. Like I keep saying, he seems very skinny. I can still see all of his ribs, you know, with the lights hitting them right the muscles in his legs, the veins in his legs. Um, even throughout this week, I kind of considered maybe I should up how much I'm feeding him because he just seems so skinny. But now after weighing him, um, obviously I, I don't need to. He put on that weight and that was a big jump. So I'm definitely not gonna increase that food. We'll just keep putting on that weight nice and slow and uh, see where it goes, but we'll continue to monitor. I, I think he's kind of in a stage where he's gonna be nice and skinny like this for a while, because he's still a puppy. And you know, maybe once he gets to about a year or something, kind of start feeling out more and, and uh, stuff like that. Food is another thing that I touch on every single week. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know that I experiment with raw meat. This week we did chicken thighs, chicken feet, uh, strawberries and bananas. And I still am using that big bag that I got at Walmart of the frozen strawberries and bananas. I'm not adding a whole lot of that just because if you give them a lot of fruit, it could be a, kind of a diarrhea hazard. So I'm not giving a whole lot of strawberries and bananas in there. It's mostly kibble and mostly meat. Um, but I am getting pretty close to, I'd say a 50-50 split as far as kibble and uh, raw meat would go. I've slowly been working my way to get to that 50-50 split and I would say right now I'm, I'm probably like a 60-40, 60% of it being kibble, 40% of it being raw meat. So we're working our way there. And with raw meat, I think I brought it up last week too. If you're giving your dog that raw diet, make sure you're washing their dishes. 
uh, a lot more often than you would normally if you were just feeding kibble because you're going to have that bacteria sitting in there and I would imagine that's not good. So if I don't wash his dishes daily, I would say I'm washing them at least every other day. And uh, just encourage you guys to do that also. Even if it's just kind of a quick rinse or something, just try, try and get them clean. Socialization is another thing I touch on every single week. Um, like I said, it was a pretty busy week. So we didn't get a whole lot of new like socialization experiences. Uh, we, we did get out to the lake where uh, my mom and my brother was out there and my mom's two dogs. But he knows all those people really well now and he knows those dogs really well so it's not really like a great socialization experiment or experience anymore because he knows all of them. But uh, again he did great with her two dogs. She's got like a 10 or 11 year old corgi and then a younger wiener dog or a dachshund. And you know he gets along pretty good with them. Uh, like I said he knows them. We only got him out on one walk this week with it being so busy. Uh, we didn't see any people or any dogs out on that walk. We just did a lot of playing in the yard this week, really. So, like I said, not a great week for socialization. Drooling is another thing that I update you guys on every single week. That's pretty much been unchanged now for like the last month. Um, he is a drooler if he's waiting for food or immediately after he's drank water or if it's very hot outside and we're walking him or something and he's been panting heavily for a while. Uh, he will drool then, but when he's just hanging around the house or something like that, he's not a drooler at all. Uh, it's pretty much just in those three situations, waiting for food, immediately after water, or if he's panting heavily after a walk, like the video I'm showing you now. This is from a couple weeks ago, um, but it's, it's very similar to this still. And like I say all the time, I just have a paper towel or a rag ready for when we would get back from a walk if it's very hot out and immediately after he's done eating and drinking. So it hasn't been a huge deal for me as of right now, but I know drooling is something uh, that lots of people consider when getting a bull mastiff or a mastiff breed in general. Barking is another thing that I touch on every single week. He's not really much of a barker. Um, it's definitely been going up, especially like related around our yard. And I would say kind of only related around our yard. And for the most part, like in our backyard where it's all fenced in. If he's hearing noises and stuff on the other side of the fence, he'll tend to start to let out barks and things like that until he can kind of figure out what that noise was exactly. And then he'll uh, kind of immediately just be like, oh, okay, I know what that is, and he'll stop. But definitely yard related only. Like if we're walking him and we're walking past other dogs that are in their own yard and they're barking at him, he won't bark back. He'll just kind of look at them. If we're in a store or anything, if he's seeing dogs and people, he won't bark at all. It's just related to around our backyard. And I think it's just kind of the guarding instinct in him. He's, he's trying to guard his territory, his property, you know, whatever. And this week we, we even had him hooked up in the front yard on a leash because uh, my daughter was riding her bike. And our neighbors got home and they were unloading groceries out of their car. And their driveway is pretty close. Two of us probably, you know, within like 10 feet of them. And kind of related to if he can see what's going on, he won't bark. He, he wasn't barking at them at all. He just watched them kind of unload their groceries and he was wagging his tail and just wanted to get pet. But on the flip side of that, like if we're in our backyard, he can hear a neighbor on the other side of the fence. He'll bark uh, until he can see like, oh, okay, it's just them. I can see what they're doing. They're not a threat kind of thing. So just kind of interesting. Once he figures out what's going on, he won't bark. And when he is even like kind of intense barking, it doesn't last very long. Um, and they're not known for that either. They're not known to just sit in the yard and bark at everything 24 seven. But uh, I'd say, you know, 30 seconds to a minute or something, he'll, he'll bark. If we're inside, he's looking out the window. Um, I'll show a video here of him looking out the window and, and seeing some people across the street from us in their yard. Uh, this is about as bad as it gets when we're inside.
So there you go. That's, uh, like I said, that's about as bad as it gets inside. If we're outside in the backyard, it'll get a little bit more intense than that, but not too bad. Energy is the last thing that I touch on every single week. Um, this week it was kind of up and down. Like I said, the last month with his teenager phase kind of going on, it's, it's been up, but he's still having, you know, a lot of down days also. And like I've said many times before, when it's up, it's not like it's crazy up. He, for the most part, when he's having these energy spurts, it's at night. It's like after dinner time from like six o'clock to nine o'clock. And again, if, if I want to take him out in the yard and, and run around with him and stuff, he'll come in and he's, he's done for the night. It's just kind of this energy if we're hanging out inside and he needs something to do. Very easy to wear out. I can take him for a long walk or take him out in the backyard and run him for 10 or 15 minutes and he's good. Um, and like I said, with, that, with the energy being up, it's pretty much only up at night. During the day, he'll pretty much sleep most of the day. Um, so when he is having those energy spurts, it's at night. Other than that, guys, that's all I have for the week. Uh, go ahead and let me know, as usual, if there's anything you'd like me to update you guys on week to week, other than what I already do. Other than that, thanks for watching, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Take care.